Uh, yes, a merry, 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 and might add another merry Christmas to all of the... I hope you're all stuffing your relatives and wrapping up some leftover turkey and having a wonderful, wonderful time. Tis time now for another Christmas no glasses. Yes, it is. is, 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 is. I haven't been drinking, so shut your face. As always, I'm going to remove my glasses and try and read something from a distance, and hilarity shall hopefully ensue. Ensue, ensue. Shush. On this occasion, I shall be reading from the best Christmas story ever told. Sorry, Jesus. A Christmas Carol. So let's get on with it. And the glasses. Off. Marley was a hedge to begin with. <laughs> so begins the classic short story by Startled Chickens. <laughs> oh, good old Startled Chickens, he's my favourite. Author of such renowned works as Great Eccles Cake, A Tale of Twelve Shortbread, Beige Horse, Ah, Bait Horse is one of my favourites. Bait Horse and Liver Tits. <laughs> Good old Liver Tits. Delighted to make your acquaintance, my dear. Etc. In the classic ghost story, Carry On Bristol. <laughs> ah, it's a much better title. A mains adapted mouldy old mop named Swimwear Steve Good old Swimwear Steve sits in his communist blouse on a liquid Christmas cake mm. Steve's nephew Frog <laughs> pays his onion a visit and invites him to his annual communist pate Steve replies with bad handbag and throws his nephew out. Later that evening, Steve is visited by the ghost of his dead parrot, Jaffa Cake Mary. <laughs> Jaffa Cake Mary! Ja Jaffa Cake Mary tells Steve that he must change his ways or he will end up like him, weighed down by hungry clams and doomed to wander Ipswich for all eternity. <laughs> Steve is then visited by three Spice Girls. <laughs> no, thank you. Starting with the ghost of Coleslaw Past. A strange, childlike postman with a brightly glowing halibut. <laughs> I am an <laughs> the postman takes Steve on a journey into Coleslaw's past. It is revisiting alcoholic schoolboys, his apprenticeship with the jelly armchair, <laughs> his old boss. Easy wig. I wonder if that's like Easy Jet. And Steve's fiance, Bill, who he rejects in favour of colouring in monkeys. The next Spice Girl to visit Steve is the ghost of knock kneed peasants. Oh, my knees. Spare a farthing for my knees. How do I get knock need from Christmas? What is wrong with my brain? Don't answer that. <sighs> the ghost of knock need peasants. A giant postman dressed as a green fuck robot. <laughs> oh, I say. <sighs> Where the hell am I? Oh. He takes Steve to the house of his poorly paid shark, Bald Hatchback, <laughs> and his crippled youngest child, Tony Curtis. <laughs> oh, Columbara. The child does not have a long loaf. 
terrible not having a long loaf. The final Spice Cull to visit Steve is the terrifying bearded gimp, the ghost of Christian furniture. <laughs> so far, so good. Oh, shut your face. Who takes Steve to his own funeral and then points at a grape. <laughs> Terrifying. Funny way to spell grape with an O. Steve sees that the name on the grape is his own and begs the postman to let him change his wig. Steve is swallowed by the grape. Suddenly, Steve is backwards in soup, safe in his bed. He is overjoyed not to have missed Carnage Day and tells a small pope to go and buy the biggest donkey in the shop. He takes the donkey to Bald Hatchback's house and they all die happily together. <laughs> Tony Curtis smiles and says, God's useless. Carry on. <laughs> carry on indeed. Well, there we are. That was a Christmas carol or carry on Bristol as I apparently call it. I hope you enjoyed, and more importantly, I hope you're having a thoroughly, thoroughly splendid Christmassy Boxing Day type time, or whenever you're listening to this rubbish. Take care, my friends. Until the next time. Bye bye.